I didn't meet Kennedy until probably eight years ago. You know, I would see stuff on Facebook and I would see postings. When I saw the movie, that's what really filled in the blanks. I'm Steve Polano. I'm Sicilian. It's one of those things with Sicilians where pretty much as many times as you can drop the F-bomb in a sentence, you win the argument. So I apologize in advance if, you know, it pops. Look, Army for eight and a half years, infantry. Drank a lot, fought a lot. Did security jobs, did contracting jobs in a lot of nasty places with a lot of nasty people doing a lot of nasty things. So that's me. That's the way I've been. Hi, my name's Jason Hansen, and this is my beautiful wife, Heather. So four years ago, uh, our daughter, Kennedy Hansen, sat out on our back porch, which is right behind this camera. She told Heather and I, my story will be shared with the world. Since Kenny's passed away, we've seen 22 of our friends, like Steve, join the church, and others who I could name that are wonderful. Joining this church was something I never thought I'd see him do in this life. And that's why it's such a beautiful story. Change happens and it takes place for each one of us as we draw closer to our Savior, and it's been fun to see that in Steve. In five years, I have no idea where, where this is gonna take me. Did you just say elders for him? Are you kidding me? Every time I like make comments in the elder quorum, my elder quorum president's doing this. <laughs> he always recognized the good and the bad in himself. I think that we need more of that in this gospel. And there's pure honesty from him. There's just so much in that story that somebody can take out of and apply to themselves. And it was her example of how she was working through the disease and still maintaining a positive peaceful attitude and you watch somebody who's brave in the face of death and you got to sit there and look at yourself and brave and at peace at the same time and you got to look at yourself and go what was your problem a 14 year old girl has no fear in that particular department then why do i i decided to pray selflessly which would be a little different the next morning all the way out to the door light the cigarette first drag now i'm awake and I felt like somebody between the bottom stair and the top stair that somebody had downloaded like 40 gigs of memory into my head. A lot of it had to do with weird stuff that I never thought about, like foundations and what I had done wrong my entire life. And that all hit me from the bottom of the stairs to the top of the stairs. Yeah, I dropped the cigarette out of my mouth and I was kind of like, okay, what just happened? I had to accept it. It's hard. It's hard. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't want to quit smoking, I didn't want to quit drinking. I just got to wake up every day and go with it, right? Okay, I'm not going to smoke today, I'm not going to drink today, I'm not going to chase after women today, and I'm not going to punch people in the face today. I've personally seen how he has been softened by the Spirit. And I tell him, I say, it's not in a sissy way, Steve, it's in a Christ-like way. Whether Steve joined the church or not, we would love him the same. If I do this stuff, then blessings will come in their time. In the end of all things, and you die and you're standing before God, what do you have left but your integrity? And if he sees that throughout the entire time you really tried, I figure that's about as best as you can do as a human being.